The Sony A93 is a 24 megapixel camera with the world's first full frame global shutter. This camera can shoot photographs at 120 frames per second with full autofocus tracking, and it has a max shutter speed of 1 80,000th of a second. Now for video, you get full 4K 120 frames per second with no crop, and it can shoot up to 10 bit 422 internal, as well as it's able to output 16 bit raw. On top of that, you have AI subject recognition from people to animals to planes and cars, and also in this camera, Camera, you have dynamic active stabilization, which gives you gimbal-like stability when you're hand-holding the camera. So I made my way all the way up here to Alaska because I want to answer the question, can the A93 be my only camera that I'm going to use and work for all the different situations that I'm filming in? So I got a call from Sony asking if I wanted to test this camera. And instead of just playing with it around my house, I decided to jump on a flight, head up to Alaska, meet up with my buddy Jake Sloan, and together we wanted to test this camera in the Alaskan wilderness. We are standing out on a frozen lake right now. It, uh, what is it? It's like almost 10 o'clock. It's not even, <laughs> the sun's not up yet. What is going on? I, it's my first time being in Alaska in winter. Uh, you know blue hour get some nice you know hero shots of each other using the a93 which I'm filming on right now how are you feeling I'm freezing I feel great okay all right let's get these shots so we can go get some more coffee so over three days we planned a series of tests for this camera and I also had the chance to take out the Sony 300 millimeter 2.8 so the plan is first to drive out to the coast where we could find some eagles test the autofocus, test the crazy fast photo burst rate. And then day two, we're working on filming a promo for a heli ski company up here in Alaska. And then day three, we really wanna test out the low light capabilities. And so we're gonna find a cool area to shoot for blue hour, create a little scene using the camera. So it's in there, yeah. So we got the 300, 2.8. Look Whoa. at that entrance, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is the new Sony F2.8 300 millimeter GM stabilized lens, which should be great for wildlife and especially birding. We're gonna try and catch an eagle in the tree up here. So day one, we're heading out to a place called Homer, but we're looking for wildlife. Perfect camera for wildlife photography. Something different. I don't normally shoot wildlife, but I think this will be fun to play around with. I also brought my 2X extender for the 300. So we have a 600 technically available. You can see here's a photo I took of the moon with the 300 and the 2X extender. It's pretty wild with the reach you get. Oh, we're in the Alaskan wilderness and there is an eagle. Did I play the part right? I think you did it right. Oh yeah, look at that. Okay, so that is with the 300. Let's put the 2X extender because I think we could get a, a nice close-up shot. Yeah, that is, uh, that is nice. Ah, oh, that lens is fast. Being that's the middle of winter, we only have a few hours of daylight each day. And the drive from Anchorage to Homer is over four hours. And our plan was pretty vague. We just decided to go out to this coastal town where there are some good spots to photograph eagles. But once we were there, we really didn't know exactly where we'd find them. Luckily, Jake had a friend out in Homer who wanted to show us where some good spots were. This is definitely a creator thing, is toolboxes become camera departments. Yeah. <laughs> One tool. One tool. <laughs> That's it. Which is used for camera stuff. Hold on, look how many GoPros you have in here. So give me a little tour. This is this is the studio. Yeah, so actually this area here is the studio, as you can tell with all the equipment. Um, I shoot all sorts of stuff here. I do courseware for our ground school. Of course, YouTube videos. Kind of a new experiment, doing some Lego with my kids. So Concord Lego there. This is quite a YouTube studio, like, Full airplane in the background. <laughs> All right, so we just got down to Homer. We're on the beach. You can see the sun over there. And it's crazy as this time of year, the sun literally just like comes up over the mountains and then right back down. So not a whole lot of daylight. So it's all this kind of side, nice sunset style lighting for a few hours and then, you know, back to blue hour. We've got beautiful lighting. So now we just need to find 
some birds or some sea otters or any other little wildlife. So we drove out to a spot called the Homer Spit, which is a long, narrow finger of land that juts out four and a half miles into the bay. And here we started spotting eagles in the distance. And this is where a couple features of this camera really come in handy. There's a pre-capture mode that's continuously recording photos before you actually click the shutter. That way, if you're just a second late to hitting the shutter button, you're still able to get photos from before you press the shutter. Now on top of that, you also have 120 frames per second. So every time you hold down the shutter button, you just get this crazy burst of photos so that you can get a ton of shots and make sure you captured at least one good one. So, shooting wildlife, kind of not that exciting, but at the same time, when you get the shot, it's very exciting. Yeah. I get the thrill of it. And it's the whole thing of like, you wait and you wait and you wait, and then in that split second when it happens, it's like, you gotta just be ready to go. I had a 600 millimeter lens, trying to find a bird out of the air, and all of a sudden it finds, finds it, it, and there boom, it is. Snap, snap, boom. snap, 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 snap. Just, Whoa. If that doesn't show you how fast the focus is. Let's say a successful day one, Jake. I would say a very successful day. We've got a group of YouTubers here. Both these guys have over 100,000 uh, subscribers. So how about we ask them some tips on how to do this whole YouTube thing? 100,000! I just broke 100,000, so I got all kinds of advice. No, I'd say my biggest tip is it's in it for the long haul. You, it's not a sprint. You can't be looking for a one-off viral video. It really is a thing if you got to think five to ten years down the road and where you want to be and what you want to do with YouTube, otherwise you're gonna be sorely disappointed in the first few years. <laughs> Maybe I'll just piggyback. If you're not committed for the long haul, then don't start until you are. And then consistency from then on out. The A93 is being marketed as a photography camera. But personally, I'm more interested in the video features because Sony has taken the best parts of all their previous cameras and put it into this one body. And alongside this global shutter, it makes this camera a very appealing cinema camera. So for day two, we teamed up with Crown Mountain Guides to capture footage of heli skiing. Now this footage is gonna be used to cut some social clips and some promo videos for the company. And so our goal was to capture enough footage and variety that really shows a day out in the backcountry heli skiing. And for me, this is the perfect way to test this camera because we have to move fast and there's not a whole lot of time to grab the shots, which is exactly how I want to test this camera. So how it works is we went out with two helicopters. One helicopter would drop us off on a mountaintop. And then the second helicopter would fly to another mountaintop and then drop the skiers off. And so we started rolling from the minute that we jumped into the helicopters all the way through to the end of the day. For our shot list, what we were trying to grab was the helicopters taking off, unloading the skiers, the helicopters flying around the mountaintops, and we wanted to do it with a variety of lenses. So we are using the 300 to capture all of the shots where the helicopter and the skiers are at a distance. But whenever we were close and we were getting in and out of the helicopters, we were trying to use the 16 to 35 to really get that immersive quality of actually being right there in the action. This is wild, like just dropped off on a ridge line, grab a few shots, helicopters are swooping around, about to come pick us up again, and uh, we're off to another spot, but like 360, everywhere you look up here, just snow-capped mountains as far as you could see. The views are just absolutely incredible. So, little issue here, like every battery we're pulling out is just 10%, 10%. And I don't know if they didn't charge last night, but they all said full when we left. Could be the cold. I mean, it is whew, chilly up here. And these batteries uh, aren't doing so well. And because it's so cold, we had to keep our gloves on for the majority of the time. Otherwise our hands would freeze instantly. And so with the ergonomics of this camera body, 
it's actually really easy to hold with gloves. And when I was jumping back and forth between the A1 and the A9 III, found it so much easier to flip the buttons between photo, video, and slow motion mode on the A9 III versus the A1. Also, one of the big advantages with the A9 III is that now there's a new button on the front of the body. And so I mapped this out in video mode to be APS-C mode. So when we were shooting with our long lens, I was able to jump in and out of the APS-C mode to be able to grab a little bit tighter shot and not have to put on an extender. So we are using the 300 millimeter without the 2X extender and just using that APS-C mode to get a little bit closer into the action. Perfect. All right, so this is at a 20 millimeter, and this is zooming into a 70 millimeter, and this is with the APS-C crop. So this is the range that you get on a 20 to 70, shooting at 4K, and this is in APS-C mode with the dynamic active stabilization turned on, so this is the most punched in that you can get out of this lens. Wind started picking up and there's a storm coming in. Got back just in time. I'd say it's a success. Very successful day. A9 performed amazing, except for the cold, which got to us all. We're driving through this area and it's like super picturesque. And it's like, we gotta stop. I mean, look at this. We're in like a winter wonderland here. So I decided to go completely handheld and just test the dynamic active stabilization to really see if it can get gimbal-like shots while we're filming a little scene here in the forest. So all of this footage is shot with dynamic active stabilization turned on. I want to pause the video for one second and just ask you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also this entire video was color graded using my set of adventure LUTs and I'll include a link to those down below in the description. All right, let's get back to the video. As we were driving back, we just could hear this weird thump happening in the front right wheel. Before we could take off for the day, we had to figure it out. All right. We're back. The car's back. <laughs> the car's working and hopefully good. You know when you take your engine apart and you have a couple leftover bolts? Those, turns out those are really important and you should make sure that all the bolts are back where they're supposed to be. You shouldn't have extras. Between chasing eagles and flying helicopters and exploring the wilderness, there's always things that just go wrong on these adventures. And the reality is, it's a lot more challenging than it looks in the final edit. So one of the big things with the A9 is that there's no dual native ISO. So your base ISO is at 2000. For photos, it's like 200. So shooting low light could be a challenge. And usually, you know, you use the ZV-1 or you use A7S III, FX3, any of cameras with that sensor to get like super low light styles of footage. But for me, I want to see how well does the A9 III perform in low light compared to, you know, this camera. So we're going to do a quick test. You know, it's still, sun's not up yet. It's blue hour, bluish hour. It's still pretty dark out. But we're going to go shoot the same thing side by side and just look at the noise performance as you start climbing higher in the ISOs and really see where the limitations are with the A9 III. So here's a side-by-side -side ZV-E1 
and the A9 III. And we're just starting at 640 and working our way up all the way to 25,600, the top ISO of the A9 III. And the sensor on the ZVE1 goes even higher. But one thing that I noticed when looking back at this footage is that as you climb the ISOs, the noise does get worse on the A9 III, but it almost feels like there's more of a consistency with the noise. So it gets more, but it doesn't degrade the image the same way that the ZVE1 degrades. And you can see when I pause right here at 10,000, the noise is awful on the ZVE1, and it's still not bad on the A9 III. Now, obviously, when we jump to 12,800 ISO, the ZVE1 is going to clean up. And then as we start climbing from here, you'll start introducing more noise into the ZVE1 footage, and the A9 III is just going to progressively get worse and worse. However, as I've been using the A9 III, it really feels like when you climb into higher ISOs, if there is some source of light, the footage is still very usable, and there seems to be less processing going on than you find in other Sony cameras. The image still stays sharp, and the colors still stay very consistent, even though you are in these higher ISOs. So because this weather is garbage today, we decided to go to a Bass Pro shop. So the idea is that we're going to go shoot a cinematic sequence in kind of a moody scene. And uh, what we're going to shoot is, well, what you do when it's cold. Coffee. So we're getting a coffee pot, a cup. We're going to build a fire. Got to find some coffee now. We just found a spot. <laughs> And there's some moose off in the distance, so I'm going to pop the 300 on and try to do some moose photos and video. But it is significantly colder here. By, by significantly colder, he means it's 30 degrees colder than where we were two hours ago. So we found a spot, we're gonna make a fire, we're gonna make some coffee, try to shoot it in kind of a cinematic way, really test the low light on this camera and just test how this camera looks in this kind of setting. Taking advantage of blue hour. So for this scene, I'm shooting on the 50 millimeter 1.4 and I put the camera on a DJI RS3 mini gimbal. Now I'm shooting wide open at 2000 ISO. So let me just show you some of the footage before the color grade. You can see here are some of these shots that we are gathering without one of my LUTs applied. Now here's what it looks like after adding the LUT. And so to shoot this sequence, I used my nine shot rule. And that's basically two establishing shots, two wide shots, two medium shots, two close up shots, and something unique. And to give us something interesting to shoot, we just have Jake walk in, build a fire, and start cooking the coffee. Now we didn't have much time because the light was fading fast, and then on top of it, we were so cold that I was starting to lose my focus while I was shooting this scene. And with the last little bit of light that we had left, we got the final shots for the scene. Now this footage definitely came out pretty noisy in the darker parts of the image, but I still think it's very usable depending on what you're shooting. So at the beginning of my trip, I had a question. Can the A9 III become the main camera I'm going to use moving forward? And the answer is yes. So I ordered one. Next, you should check out this video right here, which goes through my nine shot formula. That's going to help you get enough footage so that when you get back to your edit, you never miss anything. I'll see you over there.